Welcome to theCUBE's presentation of the Unstoppable Domains Partner Showcase. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here talking about the metaverse and what it all means, what it brings to the table. We've got two pioneers here in the metaverse, breaking it down, doing great stuff. Uh, both co-founders of companies, Noah Gaynor, co-founder and CEO of Parcel, and she's a Heatherington co-founder of Atlantis World. Digging deep and doing all the great stuff in the metaverse. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you so much for having us. So first of all, I want to say congratulations for the work you guys are doing. This is one of the biggest ways we've seen coming on. It's a changing user expectations. It's a changing architecture. Um, it's real technology involved. There's a lot of action. 30% of people at University of California, Berkeley are dropping out of the computer science program to get into web three. This is the biggest technolog technological change, business model change, user experience change. And we've seen going back multiple inflection points. This is a big deal. So the metaverse, is real. Some people say, well, you know, it's not, it's coming. It's just a matter of time. So let's get into it. What are you guys doing? Tell us about your companies, Parcel and Atlantis World. Noah, let's start with you. Sure. So Parcel is a, a marketplace for virtual real estate. So you can think of something like OpenSea, which everyone is familiar with, but we solely focus on virtual land and, and virtual real estate um, in a number of virtual world, maybe you've heard of Decentraland or the Sandbox. Um, so we, we feature those on our platform and, you know, we take it the next level uh, with the user experience. So we have, you know, fully interactive maps. We have price estimates. Uh, you can think of it like a Zestimate on Zillow. And um, in general, we're, you know, we're building the fully uh, verticalized solution for, for virtual real estate users. And that will extend into, you know, rentals like Airbnb out your, you know, your virtual condo or, getting a mortgage on your on your virtual home, um, as well as you know, cultivating uh, the community around it and especially helping uh, empower creators and architects and builders and um, you know, getting them work and getting their their work on display. I'm looking forward to digging into that. That sounds very cool. CJ, what's Atlantis World doing? What do you got going on? Yeah, exactly. So at Atlantis World, uh, we're building the Web3 social metaverse uh, by connecting Web3 with social, gaming, and education in one lightweight virtual world that's accessible to everybody. So we're going with actually a lightweight first and a pixel approach um, so that you can play on mobile or a really old device. Um, because the problem with existing metaverses is that they set you know, an incredibly high cost barrier to entry. Um, and also tech isn't necessarily uh, readily available globally in terms of things like VR headsets and gaming PCs. Um, like for example, when I was in Africa, uh, I, I travel a lot. If my MacBook would break, it's not even that I couldn't necessarily uh, afford to buy a new one, it's that it's actually not available there. Um, so we're ruling out a lot of the global kind of population from a metaverse experience. And we're building something which is like 2D pixel and super lightweight uh, to kind of bridge that gap and build something which is ready to be mass adopted now and onboard billions of users into Web3. So they'll all basically be using Web3 applications in a gamified way um, and going really hard on connecting that with social features features um, like voice chat and talking gating and virtual events and dial voting and all of that stuff. You know what I love about you guys are doing, you're pioneering a whole nother area, but what's great about the whole crypto area is that since you know 2017 on where you saw Ethereum set the developer market started coming in strong. So you, you started to see that development and now we got the metaverse. <laughs> so I got to ask you guys, what's the current definition of the metaverse. I mean, I, I mean, everyone's, I mean, since Facebook changed their name to Meta, it's been a hype cycle and everyone's like, well, first of all, you know why they did that, but, but they're actually putting a lot of dough in this. This is a wave, we talked about that, but what is it? What is the metaverse? How do you describe it? Why is it relevant? Um, virtual real estate, that sounds cool. Where does this all come together? Explain it for the people out there that might not be getting it right. Yeah, I feel like for me, um, the critical uh, difference between an ordinary game and what one might think of as a game and a metaverse is actually Web3. For me, Web3 is metaverse. And for, for me, it's really because Web3 enables real world utility um, but inside of a virtual environment. So for example, inside of Atlantis, you might run into a DeFi bank and understand by interacting with other uh, game characters, which are programmed to teach you about DeFi and like what is Aave or how to deposit. And so you're actually getting a real world utility out of doing something in a virtual environment. And for me, that's what really bridges the gap into Metaverse. Um, yeah, I, I'm really kind of kind of bullish on that. <laughs> Noah, what's yeah. your take? What's your take? Define the current state of the the definition of the metaverse. What is the metaverse? 
Yeah, to me, it's uh, it's the 3D internet. And I, I do agree uh, with what CJ is saying, how, you know, what makes it the most compelling and will ultimately the most successful is that addition of a blockchain and decentralized, uh, you know, distributed ledger technology, because you can have the closed metaverse, which nobody wants that future. And I don't believe that will be the future, you'll, you know, uh, versus the open metaverse, which is blockchain based, the users are the owners of the assets and the land and, and everything around it. And it's really for and by the people. But I see the metaverse as just an extension of the internet we're using today, but we're going to have hardware that makes it 3D and more immersive, like AR and VR. Yeah, I think yeah, definitely. Go ahead, CJ. Around kind of like eight or nine months ago, when we started to build Atlantis, we decided that the metaverse was a virtual world where you could live, work, play, and earn. And that's what we've been building. It started off as like building the metaverse that has DeFi. Um, and over the over the kind of time that's gone on, and our community has grown, and we've started to understand the future of our product and our mission and values. It started to become the Web3 metaverse, right? And then on top of that, the Web3 social metaverse. So it's a combination of all of these things. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I'm a little bit older than you guys. I wish, I wish I was your age, but when the web came along, people were saying the same thing. I thought the web's terrible. It's a stupid thing. It's never going to be real. Uh, and it, yeah, there was problems. It was slow to dial up back in the day. But you know, now with gaming, I got to say, I got to look at the gaming evolution. You know, being a gamer myself, old school, I guess. But you know, ga the gaming culture is a, a proxy to what. I see kind of happening in the metaverse. And I want to get your reaction to that. I'm not saying directly, but you saw what gaming did, right? In game currency, some, you know, pockets of the same kind of dynamic where a lot of value was happening. The expectations were different for users. So how does the metaverse, how does gaming cross over? What's the ecosystem of metaverse? Obviously it's a cultural shift one, infrastructure two, but I can just see this new generation of thinking it's a whole nother level. Can you guys share your thoughts absolutely. On, on that riff? Yeah, absolutely. It's like for us, we really believe that we can enable a social revolution um, where impoverished uh, workers from impoverished and remote regions can actually be onboarded into these digital play to earn economies um, and also learn to earn economies. So it's about leveraging, you know, Web3 and blockchain gaming, whatever actually you want to call it. Uh, to enable this revolution and actually onboard new people uh, into a completely new working economy and dynamic. Um, one of the other things we envision for Atlantis, imagine like you run around this game world uh, and you complete quests inside of the game. And these quests basically involve talking to the non-player characters, the NPCs, which are basically pre-programmed. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever played an MMORPG before, but it can be super fun. And they'll actually teach you how to use different crypto applications, whether that's a DeFi bank, an NFT marketplace, uh, kind of digital asset exchange. Um, and once you all do that, the, the kind of end goal and the vision is that you will be rewarded with tokens. So users will earn crypto for learning about crypto. Um, and if anybody wants to do that right now, Oh, they can actually go to rabbit hole GG. It's a different uh, project to Atlantis, but they are building uh, learn to earn and you go and you complete quests and interact with different crypto applications. And it's so crucial for onboarding. And yeah, it's going to be really powerful, the kind of revolution that play to earn and learn to earn will enable. I'll check out the rabbit hole GG. Sounds awesome. Uh, what's your take on the reaction to that riff on, you know, this convergence of culture, tech, gaming uh, vibe that's kind of divine in the metaverse. What's your take on that, uh, Noah? Yeah, I mean, I think gaming will be the on-ramp for maybe the first billion people, you know, into blockchain. Um, it's something people already do and are already paying for, and they now have the opportunity to get paid to play. So the incentives are extremely strong, and I think that will be a great way to usher people in, teach them about blockchain without realizing that they're using blockchain, and then once the, once they're already in it and have already used it, then it becomes much more natural to use it in other applications. It's it's funny. Um, yeah. It's funny. People always talk about oh, user experience. You know, expectations oh. drive experience, right? If you expect oh. something, and if they're used to gaming, I see the great great call out there. Good point. Well, let me ask you guys a question because I think this is, comes out a lot in terms of like the market shifts, and and, and metaverse. You know, there's an old expression: great markets pull the products out of companies or out of the industry. What organic growth have you guys seen? in the metaverse that's been either a surprise or a natural evolution of just success and just growth. Because you know the, the market's hungry for this and the, it is relevant, it's new. What's pulling out? What's, what's, what's coming out of the organic aspect of the metaverse? I think a lot of art and 
architecture and design and you know it's uh it's empowering a lot of independent creators and and you know allowing them to stretch their their skills in a way that they maybe couldn't do before but now can do and, and get compensated for um like we see really see the rise of the creator coming in the next you know couple of years in in the open metaverse and of that, you know, finally they will be uh, the, the ruling class. They will they won't get the short end of the stick, which you know, artists yeah. have for you know for all <laughs> maybe all of the time. Yeah, I saw the Wall Street bets guys in the same way feel the same way. CJ, what's your take on what's getting pulled out of the yeah. organic execution growth of the interactions and metaverse evolution? Of course, yeah. I, I would first of all love to go back to the previous point on gaming and just kind of like definitely agree with with what Noah said. And the thing is that. Gaming is 3.4 billion user market. Um, and they're typically an experimental uh, by nature, uh, people and group of users, right? So it's definitely a huge onboarding opportunity uh, for teaching users about Web3 and using Web3 in a gamified way and making that kind of inherently fun and engaging. Um, and then yeah, in terms of organic growth, um, Web3 is incredible for that. We place a huge emphasis on, I think, you know, collaborate versus compete um, and try to enable network effects for everybody who is involved in Atlantis and becoming part of our, you know, fast growing ecosystem. Like we have eight blockchains, more than 10 DeFi apps, like Aave, Yen, Balancer, One Inch, Perpetual, uh, all of the DAOs, like the XDAO, Metcartel, uh, Loves the DAO, Pizza DAO, all of the NFT communities. Like we're actually building a yacht for Bot It Yacht Club uh, on the beach in Atlantis. Um, so that's fun. But yeah, we, we grew our community. We're very early stage still, we've been building only for eight or nine months, but we grew our community to like 20 to 30,000 community members across social channels. And we recently raised over a million dollars um, from our community and we're fully bootstrapped and taking no private money. So the ability to actually do that and to coordinate um, both kind of community efforts and, and fundraising and resources is really testament to Web3 and what it's becoming and the community aspect of that. Uh, and also its future and the kind of dawn and domination of the metaverse. Well, I got to say, just got to give you props for that. Uh, I think that fundraising dynamic is, is a real entrepreneurial new thing. That's awesome. you got active communities, they vote with their contribution and whether it's money and or other value, right? you got social value. This is the whole thing about the metaverse. There's a new community culture going next level here. We believe in community and we believe in web three and we don't, we don't understand why, um, you know, most leading metaverses are focusing fully on, um, you know, huge IP and actually ignoring uh, Web3. So we're actually trying to build the infrastructure layer for Web3 applications and for Web3 driven utility inside of the metaverse. And what we mean for that by that, imagine that any developer or any project or any team or any company could occupy a plot for free inside of the metaverse, customize it to their branding, and then effectively set up shop, whether that's a Web3 integration, so it's a DeFi bank or it's an exchange, or whether that's an NFT marketplace or a music venue or a co-working space. We're really excited about that. And we really believe we've designed the value capital mechanism for virtual land in the metaverse and we're approaching it in a different way to land in the real world. That's awesome. Well, let's get into that infrastructure conversation. Unstoppable Domains, obviously they're having the partner showcase here. You guys are partners. This NFT kind of like access method is a huge, I love it by the way, I think it's phenomenal. I love the value there, but it's also a digital identity and it's distributed naming. So you kind of got this enablement vibe. You got, solves a problem. How is it uh, working with you guys? Take us through what is what does Unstoppable Matt, what is, why does Unstoppable matter to the metaverse? Yeah, Unstoppable is very great, uh, mostly for identity and having a kind of uh, cross-chain identity uh, inside of the metaverse um, and just kind of in Web3 in general. Um, and Unstoppable, we enable login with Unstoppable. So if you have, for example, an Unstoppable domain, uh, which is like a human readable kind of crypto wallet address, but you can also do some incredible, you know, stuff with it. And there is a lot of fun and exciting utility. Um, effectively, like if you would have, I don't know, like unstoppable.dao, um, you would be able to use that to log in uh, to the Atlantis metaverse. And it would represent, you know, some of your identity and social graph in game uh, with your peers. Awesome. No, what's your take on the ensemble yeah. angle on this? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, make, it makes it social. So, you know, instead of you can have a feed, you know, something we're thinking about at Parcel is like a feed of all the real estate transactions. And, you know, you could follow certain people, you can follow your friends and see a feed of everything that your friends are doing in, you know, English or human readable terms. 
that are, that are not just like a wallet address. Um, so, you know, that's obviously a big one. And they're also giving people more options in terms of, you know, naming and, and top level domains. If you want to be, you know, something dot wallet or dot NFT or, you know, hopefully eventually love dot metaverse, um, yes. will help, you know, expand that ecosystem much more in addition to like on our like backend, being able to capture email when they, uh, when they log in and, you know, provide better marketing for our users. What would you guys say to other metaverse partners looking for work with unstoppable domains for their login and digital identity? What's your, what would you recommend? Uh, it doesn't I mean, make sense no... to not do it. <laughs> Connect with the best app and integrate that. Uh, if you want to keep shipping stuff for your community and keeping it exciting and engaging and enabling uh, user choice uh, in how they choose to display their identity in virtual environments. Yeah, there's there's practically no downside and um, plenty of upside. You know, in again, having those having those users uh, who are already using their unstoppable domains quickly, you know, log into your site and log in. All right, that's awesome. Well, good good stuff with Unstoppable. I got to ask you guys, give an example of your products. I love the metaverse uh, progression. I love the pioneering work you guys are doing. And again, the funding things are different. The user expectations are different. The technology experience are different. Billions of people going to be uh, enabled for it. What are the cool things you guys got going on? Um, CJ, you were we were talking before we came on camera about the tree thing you got going on. Take us through some of the, the things that are exciting that people may not know about or may know about. What, are, what should they pay attention to? Share, share some uh, insight. Yeah, of course. So one of the fun things actually that we're building at Atlantis uh, together with our full team and also some outside contributors from the community um, and Token Protocol, uh, which is a regenerative finance protocol. And I'll get into that a little bit in a minute. Uh, effectively, what we're actually doing is planting a carbon capturing virtual forest inside of the metaverse that will in future also be biodiverse. So how we're approaching that is imagine that you can plant NFT trees inside of the metaverse, provide that you'll deposit X amount of kind of USD stablecoin or Ether or some uh, digital asset. Um, you can actually use that uh, to deposit inside of the tree. And we will use some, probably something like Superfluid, uh, which is like a kind of smart contract infrastructure platform. And we will essentially enable every single second funds being sent from the contract and actually purchasing real world carbon credits. Uh, so legitimate, you know, government backed carbon credits from the voluntary kind of public market um, that have actually been bridged on, train, uh, on chain, transformed into a crypto asset. And they will be locked away inside of these trees inside of Game Forever. And in future, we also hope to have like user on animals roaming the great forest of Atlantis, which will have biodiversity and endangered species credits um, locked inside. And we hope to support, you know, a variety um, of different kind of uh, sustainable assets and things like that uh, to really populate this ecosystem. So it's, it's, you're doing climate change good for real, as well as rendering it as an asset for everyone to see and enjoy. <laughs> Absolutely, and for me, that's what makes the metaverse the metaverse. That's what I talked about. It's how Web3 enables the metaverse to cross over into our real world, ordinary life from URL to IRL and actually provide some incredible positive impact for all of humanity on the planet. And Noah, you, you have some action going on there. I mean, I would be like, oh, virtual <laughs> real estate, isn't it unlimited real estate? But when you have users come together, this value, we've seen this in gaming. What are some of the cool things uh, you got going on over there at Parcel? Yeah, I think one thing that stands out, which maybe not enough people are thinking about are AR virtual worlds. So, um, you know, right now a lot of people are focused on, yeah, the VR types, uh, Central and Sandbox and, and, and Atlantis, um, but there very well may be a billion people using augmented reality before there are a billion using uh, virtual reality just because of the, the nature of the hardware development and Apple may come out with their AR headset by the end of the year. Um, so there are a few projects there where you, they've taken a real world map and parcel it out into hexagons and, and you can actually buy that and, um, you know, uh, you own that, that piece and you can put your own custom content there. And on that social impact point, we have heard about a few projects that are trying to use it for good. And uh, like one project has bought up some land in the Amazon rainforest and some of the proceeds go to conservation of the rainforest. So, uh, you know, we're, we're all about using blockchain for good and, um, Right, coming together as a as a 
I, I can't wait. It's a club. To, I can't wait yeah. to see the commercial real estate division of your group with all the work from <laughs> you know, remote coming on. Guys, great stuff you got going on. Again, you guys are pioneering an area that is coming big, it's coming strong, it's got a lot of and momentum, vitality, and energy to it. Um, put a plug in for your companies. No, we'll start with you. What's going on with Parcel? Share a, a plug for the company, what you're looking for, do uh, some key highlights, uh, news. Take a minute to, to give a plug. Sure, yeah, great. Um, you know, we are the destination for virtual real estate and that extends well beyond just the buyers and sellers. You know, that's that's everyone ac across the whole chain, um, with property managers and uh, property developers, but then also the builders and creators and artists. And we are working right now on, you know, aggregating the best um, creator directory in the metaverse. So you can, you know, think of it as a place where artists can come showcase their work and, and get hired. Um, as well as just generally like bridging this knowledge gap that is much, much wider than we even expected. So we have our Parcel Learn product coming soon, which is a fully fledged knowledge base with education, informational content, and lots of rich data. Um, where can people get involved? What's the, the, what's the, what's the channels? All channels open, where, where can we find you? Um, yeah, our website is parcel.so. On Twitter, you can find us at ParcelNFT. Um, and you know you can link to our Discord uh, from either one of those. It's the best way to get involved. All right, CJ, put a plug in for Lance World. I know you got a lot of action to share. Yeah, of course. I would love to see uh, everybody there. Uh, thanks so much for having us and uh, thanks for listening. Like I said at the start of the call, we're building the Web3 social metaverse and we're connecting Web3 with social, gaming and education in one lightweight virtual world that's accessible to everybody. We're also doing some crazy, crazy stuff uh, like planting the carbon capturing virtual forest and all of that and trying to be the infrastructure layer for Web3 driven real world utility inside of the metaverse. Um, and we believe that we have designed uh, the critical value capture mechanism for virtual land. And we will be sharing more about all of that very soon and continuing to integrate the best apps from across the Web3 ecosystem and showcasing them at the center of Atlantis. Um, you can go to discord.gg forward slash Atlantis world. If you would love to learn more uh, about us, you can go to wiki.atlantis.world. And there is some documentation now, which includes backstory and team and some of our milestones stones and achievements so far from winning hackathons to raising grants um, and launching our alpha build, soft launching it. And we all have a public free to play coming in March. Um, and we're most active, I would say, on Discord uh, and Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, you can find us Atlantis OX or just search Atlantis World and it's the first one that comes up. All right. CJ, thank you. Noah, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate you sending the time here and Unstoppable Showcase and being a partner. Again, they got the great digital identity, great plug there for them here. Thanks for sharing that. And thanks for sharing the time. Appreciate it. You guys are pioneering some good stuff. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right. The Cube's Unstoppable Domain Partner Showcase. Thanks for watching. Yeah.